What is up, guys? Walla J here, and I'm here with my co-host, Art of War. And uh, producer Chris is on hiatus for the weekend, so it's He's just not on us. hiatus. He's just celebrating his birthday. That's all. Hiatus. Ah. What does hiatus mean? I don't know. I would think the hiatus is more than just one week. Like A what? week? He's taking a week-long hiatus? Yeah. Well, that's what do you mean not, more than one that's week? That's what I'm saying. It's not a hiatus. I'm thinking that a hiatus is when you're taking some time off, like maybe two, three months. He's not on hiatus. Oh, no, no. He's taking a one-week hiatus. Now, now, Sherry, on the other hand, she will, you know. Brah. Brah. But she's back in the gym, though. So? I'm just I'm I don't saying. care about the gym. Baby steps. This, this is what's important. I know. The podcast. I know. I don't know why she's not here. Uh, she said she had like a some baby reveal gender shit. People do that shit. For yeah, me. yeah, bro. My buddy yeah. Nelson did it, but he did his cool. So it was like a boxing bag. I was uh, it was kind of like a pinata, really, but it was a punching bag, and he punched it and it exploded out the confetti. Uh, for boy or girl, well, still the same shit. That's, that's I know, but I mean, if you're to, if you're to do one, you know, what I mean, try to make it cool like that. I think you know. If you want your man to be there, you kind of got to, you kind of can't be like, oh, what yeah, color is yeah. the cake? I don't oh, know, man. I'm, so I'm, boring. I'm, I'm too old school. I'd be like, oh, you're going to do that? Cool. You do that. It's a boy. Here's cigars. Yeah. Well, you know, I'll, no? I'll, I'll take the cigars afterwards. You know, I'm not, I, ah, man, I just, I can't get into all that. No. No. I mean, now, like, I don't know if you've seen the latest with, uh, what is it? The uh, weight privilege. Wait, oh, I saw that. that so, you, so if you think that you're, privilege? yeah, if you think that you're thin and others think that you're thin, even though you're a fat ass, you can have thin privilege. Uh, well, some that's people, what it was. Some people have thin privilege. Thin privilege. But uh, how about you just bust your ass, man, and you know, eat right. And, you know what I mean? And you can have your thin privilege. It's like are, are people's feelings that soft? Where it is, you know. They have to say to themselves, oh, I'm thin, even though you weigh like 900 pounds, so you can feel good about yourself. You know, it's not like we're shaming you. I'm just I, saying, I, like, I, I fuck, I'm fucking shaming you. What I'm saying is, I'm like, fat. I don't care. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't put the work in to yeah. reach your, the, your goal body type, not everybody else's goal, but your goal body type, you know, people are going to make judgments. It is what it is. It is what it is. You know what I mean? If someone is really, really fit, usually they get judged for being like cocky or, we're all into themselves and so on and so forth. If you're really, really skinny, it's like they don't eat enough. Or if you're really overweight, you know, like, oh, that person was lazy. It's, it's, it's something. Or they overeat. It's, I've been lazy. It doesn't, it doesn't I matter. I don't care. It doesn't affect my feelings. I know, man, but you're not ever, yeah, this is what everybody thinks though. I'm just saying it's, it's silly. So I'm like, man, I'm kind of like in between because I kind of fluctuate. I get a little heavy and then I get real fit. Like, yeah, I kind of yo-yo just a little bit, but I've never been obese, but. You know, I have I have it in my head. I'm obese. Try not to be. See, but you you have something in your head that tells you that you're obese, but you're not. No, I gotta work. I gotta work so I don't become obese. You gotta work so you don't become obese. Keep keep working, working. And oh yeah, well, try to eat right. Like that, I don't know when I'm starting to get heavy in the face. Well, that's anybody. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just not you. I say everybody. Everybody's got to work at it. I'm heavy right now, but you know, yeah. once I make up my mind that you know it's enough, it's enough, then. I'll get to where I need to be, and my feelings won't be hurt if you call me fat. Yeah. Because yeah, I'm yeah. fucking fat right now. It is what it is. Fuck, man. But, they, you know, they're just trying to... And the, the whole privilege thing, too, that bothers the shit out of me. Like, I get a privilege because I worked hard, and, and people don't right. judge me the like, same way they judge you. I'm just so, saying. So, so the CrossFitters that work their ass off... Oh, I that's just they, gen genetics. They didn't... Oh, that's okay. just genetics. Yeah, sure. They did a couple burpees, a few uh, muscle ups, and they got that. It's just genetics. Yeah, okay. Never mind their diet. Never mind all the hard work they put in and the I've, hours and hours of dedication weekly. Listen, I've seen fat ass people that have transformed their body in a matter of a year or, or less. Yeah. Just by doing all that, all those things, going to the gym, working hard, you know, get dialing in their nutrition. Yeah. You know. Stop eat, drinking pop all the time. I mean, look at Robbie. You know, Robbie he, was a huge example. Robbie, he's not here right now. Well, his bitch ass. He was he was Where like six hundred and twenty seven pounds, and he got down to what two two thirty. I'm excited. Yeah, but he's like two sixty right now. <laughs> he he went over to Texas, started eating all those damn tacos. <laughs> he wasn't six twenty. I was just kidding. He was three hundred plus three seventy five. I think it was, was three fifty. 
he was trying to lose one, exactly 150 pounds so he can write a book, How I Lost 150 Pounds. So he, he <laughs> that, that was a two page book? That was, no, that was, that was his, his thinking for wanting to lose 150 pounds exactly. Like, it wasn't like, I think I'm most optimal at this weight. It was not like, I aesthetically feel like I'm going to look this way. For him, I want to write a book about how I lost 150 pounds, which he fell short. And he was like, it's just not the same of how I lost 125 pounds or 120 pounds or whatever the fuck it was. Well, you know, he had a goal. He did. I just thought it was interesting that his goal was just so he could write a book and actually put plug those numbers on the front front page. <laughs> well, 150. How to lose 150. I mean, it's catchy. 150 looks better and sounds better than one than 125. Yeah, for sure. 120 or 118 or 116. Or whatever. Right. No, like how I lost 107.3 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? But no, man, he did a lot of work. And, uh, but you know, it's funny though, cause his diet will slip, right? And I know this because he calls me in the morning and he's like, Oh, all right, hold on. And he's like, uh, I'll take two donuts. They're for my kids. <laughs> right. Oh, okay, Robbie. Yeah. Well, they were good. I was like, so you're feeding your kids donuts in the morning? What? What? You, what? They're pretty, Bro, they're right, kids. Right. They're going to burn that by the time, you know, they get to school. I'm not, that's not what I'm knocking. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying is, it's like, come on, buddy. You know the, you know the healthy lifestyle choices and the struggles that you've been through. So make sure that you try to Well, well what is he going to do? You know, feed him a keto diet? No, man. How about just feed him a nice balanced diet? It's normal. Well, if, but that's not my point. Well, how we, about, we digress. Maybe it was went, a treat. We digress. You went negative on me. <laughs> what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, he's still out eating a little fast food. Oh, on the regular. You know what I mean? It'll be like, McDonald's, you know, it is what it is. So I think that's why he's sticking right around the 265, 250, 50 mark. You know, nothing too crazy. But definitely not as 150 pound goal loss, you know, loss goals, but definitely a marked improvement from 330 pounds, 300 plus pounds. He'll get back on track. Yeah, yeah. We just need to move his ass back to Jacksonville. I can watch him. Dude, he's happy where he's at. I don't know. No, I, I think that you're not happy that he's happy. Yeah, is that I, what it is? I think that you're a hater. I mean, all this week, all I've seen is just haterism by people online, so. Who's hate? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? there's, there's a, okay, so if you just got, if you disguise a public post as sage advice, but shames that person, it's, it's not, not advice. It's not advice. It's throwing shade. Now, if you did that same exact write up, but did it privately, towards those people to really truly help them out without their own shape. Everybody knows who you're talking about. To really to really help them out, like that would be a legit thing to do. But you're 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 doing it online. You're trying to shame somebody. You're trying to make fun of somebody. that that's unexcusable. Man, come on man. That's not and, how and you, that's what, not how you handle it. Especially if these are younger younger people that you're trying to help. You know what I mean? Well, I that's like, the thing. He's not trying to help them. No, he's not. And, so and, and this these guys that, you know, that quote unquote were trying to be shamed by what they were doing, are actually doing pretty good. Yeah, doing pretty good. That's so, I mean. you know. I don't know, man. So, yeah. So, yeah. Hate, hate, the hate has been flowing on the internets. In, in the interwebs. Into interwebs <laughs> on, on the line. <laughs> on the on line. The line. <laughs> I think that yeah. if you, if you kick out a certain amount of hate, man, you should really, really, really think about how you're doing it and what the actual result's going to be. You know, could be lawsuits, could be, could be anything. You gotta be really careful what you say. I told those guys, you know what? Don't even worry about that nonsense. Cause, uh, one of them uh, came up to me and, and mentioned, man, that's kind of fucked up. You know, you, you would think that he would try to help or whatever, but, but no, he was like, Hey bro, you know, don't even worry about that stuff. Just keep doing you and do what you do. It's just different agendas. But anywho, but like I said, for Robbie, I'm not hating on him. Oh, it sounded to me like you were. What I'm saying is that maybe he, I'm saying he's been here his whole fucking week and hasn't seen me once. No, no, no. He, he got here on Thursday night. Thursday night. Right. Night. Thursday. No, Friday. No, 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 no. Today is Saturday. Thursday. There's going to be night. a Sunday involved. It sounds like you're hating right now. I don't think hating. He's got to go see his family. He's got to go see so his wife's him. family. Already done it. You know, done it, done no, it. No, no, he hasn't. And then, and then, you're acting like you're the most important, you know, I'm part not, of, of, the of the most important, trip to Jacksonville. Not the most important. He but came maybe, to see his mom. But maybe, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe a bonus. Well, he's not. He hasn't left yet. A bonus, if you will. Listen, he hasn't not left. We'll see. So. He's supposed to be here right now. I don't worry, well, Robbie. I know you're watching. He's not. Where you at? He's not. I'm looking at the. He's not. Who's watching? No, it don't matter. One, <laughs> two. What's up, Holly? What's up, Brian? Julio. Love your name, bro. 
<laughs> Robert Smith, what's up? And some faggot named what? Arturo. <laughs> Arturo Velarde. Why, why are you on the feed? Oh, I didn't know that you had a screen up there, <laughs> so I, I'll take it down. But the reason was, is a good thing I did do that, too, because I was sitting there all in basso with my legs like this, and the camera pointed right at my... You know what I mean? So... As you guys can notice, we're not at our regular studio today. We are uh, doing, uh, uh, what do you call it? This is like a get It's, it's a, like the casting couch. We're just hanging out. Yeah. Uh, we don't have our regular equipment because, again, producer Chris is celebrating his birthday in, in ATL. Happy birthday, by the way, Up Chris. in the ATL yeah. where the players play. Yeah. He went to see, well, he went to see the biggest player player. Who's that? He's Pops. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Big Daddy Sharon. Yeah. Big Daddy Sharon. Yeah, yeah. man. He's That's cool. his rap name, too. Yeah. He, I, think, I think he's coming out with an album, too. He does do he does do raps. Yeah. He. I think he does the rapping, and then Chris does the beatboxing, right? Oh, uh, I don't think. Chris don't got those kind of skills. But he's that, he's that is a baller. Yeah, his dad's pretty. 20 pretty inch blades on the Impala. Well, is it his dad or is it his, his mother? In law. They both are. They're both bond. They're it's both power bond. couple. Power that's couple. That's right. right. They run Atlanta. At least a good portion. Of it. <laughs> At least a good portion of it. The white, least, the white part. At least they're a state. <laughs> the white part. Okay, so. Okay, 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 okay. No, they're not plantation owners. Relax, folks. Is there plantations still? Uh, there are, but you know. So who works them then? How <laughs> does <laughs> the people that get paid to work. It, oh, they get paid. They get paid good. How's it work? Well, Is it illegal workers? How's it work? I don't know. You're gonna have Wepa. to. You're gonna have to ask. You know what you want. Uh, well, you are Mexican, so. Oh no, no, no! I already got enough jobs. I got like three jobs. I got three jobs, and uh, I'm good. I'm good with that, man. I'm yeah, good. I'm good. Three with jobs. Three. Yeah. yeah. I only know of two. Oh yeah. yeah. Name those. Well, the the one where you. Look at bones and shit. Yeah, got that one. The school and what else? Got that one. And, and the military. Oh, that's right. The military. But that's once a week. And you you think it's once a week. It's, a lot of my fucking off time is, is fielding calls and answering questions and doing paperwork and all that shit and not getting paid for it. Well, whose fault is that, though? It's not my fault. It is your fault. No, 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 no. Well, no, no. Did, it's, my do, it's my duty. No, no, it's no. my duty. Did anybody force you to go in the military? Actually, no. Okay, then it is. But it was either no. mil- it was either the military or drugs and alcohol. Well, you could be a millionaire by now. You know, could how be. you how you done it right? Oh, man, I think. Oh, you could be dead. I, I'm more likely to be dead. <laughs> I think the percentage is skewed towards death. <laughs> like I didn't think I was going to make it to 18. I told you the story. Yeah. When I made it to 18, I was like, oh, there's a chance, but I don't think 21 is possible. Well, maybe. I joined the military, and that's what made it happen. It's like either yeah. I'm going to get killed in the military, but I'm definitely not going to get killed by bullets. Well, maybe if you stop blowing like, up cars and shut up, uh, bro. Bro, allegedly. Uh, statues of limitation have run out. So. Oh, you think? Yeah. <laughs> I don't really about no cars or bombs or <laughs> guns or Drano or another. Well, see, there you go. The same. Yeah. Let's not bring that up anymore. Let's just let that dog lie, you know what I mean? Well, you were the one who pointed it out. That was a long time ago, man. Yeah. And it was, it was on the slide slide talking about allegedly my friend. This guy I knew. Oh, allegedly. My possibly, bad. maybe. Yeah, like have. allegedly stealing bicycles and all that shit, too. Hey man, when you're poor and young and need money, you know, gotta have food and shit. Well, then how can you be upset at people that do it now? I'm not upset. You could. I'm not upset. As a matter of fact, we, we talked Since about. Since I haven't done we it, talked I about, would be upset. We talked about previous podcasts about, you know, what do we do with these youths? The what, youths. The youths. What do we do with these youths that have the struggle and need some sort of like, uh, mentorship and so on and so forth? Um, it's, uh, do we throw police at them? Do we put them in jail? No, that's not the answer. But we definitely have to have some sort of programs. Programs. Even if it's state-run programs, but programs, nonetheless, where we put these people and keep them busy. Keep them busy. Keep them on the positive path. You know, there are programs in jail. There is programs in jail. There is, but they're in jail. Right. That's the problem. So, okay, this kid maybe doesn't have the greatest home life, maybe lives in a rough neighborhood, Possibly doesn't have that many options as far as like money, you know, parents, you know, you don't have those, those options. There needs to be some sort of, some sort of a program that we can kind of put those kids in, after school programs, things that's, you know, the positive nature. And make it cool. You know what I mean? Like what? You gotta make it cool. Like, man, like right now, man, we got a couple of our kids. They, uh, 
you know, for my school, you know, they have these, uh, machine shops and, and, and like build, like build after school programs and different cl- kind of clubs like that where they go and they, they like, there's this Lego build program, which is like an, it's like a basic engineering. Lego? Yeah, but they do it out of Legos and they create these machines out of Legos. It's crazy. It's just building oh, okay. blocks. I mean, they have different, different, uh, materials and stuff like that that they can do too. But I think that's really cool. A lot of them, a lot of them are, are 3D printing now, 3D printing and building robots. Yeah. Like, uh, my nephew, I got him in, uh, you know, after school program or whatever. He's, you know, he's working on robotics. I'm like, how cool is that? 13 years old. Is he 13 years old? 13, just had his birthday. Wait, yeah. th- that's the kid that comes to class? Yeah. Dude, he looks so much younger. Oh, he's tiny. I thought he, I thought he was like nine. Yeah, he's the size of nine year old. When I saw his classmates that are 13, they're like size of me. And I'm like, Hey, welcome to his birthday party. I'm looking up. What the fuck? Yeah, no, dude, they're huge. I thought he was just like a little fella. No, my little nephew, man. He's tiny. He's tiny dude. Tiny dude, but just turned 13. Damn, you better start feeding him some steak or something. Bro, he's or is a, he a vegan? He's a, no, he's a picky eater, but he's been eating more. I feed him. I feed him. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna have to feed him the same thing you feed George. You're saying George is a gorilla or something? No, saying? George is big George and strong. Is stout, though. Yeah, George is tough. That's good genetics right there, man. The George. <laughs> so he's talking about guys. This is my dog, George. George is this hound Sharpe mix, which is a weird ass. Just a weird mix. Kind of looks like a pit bull, but he doesn't. He has this like wrinkly face a little bit, but it's not wrinkly, wrinkly like a Sharpe and sand coat. It's like very. T- but he's built like a hound dog, man. Very kind of like, I don't want to say long, but smooth. You know what I mean? When he runs, he like trollops. This dude's gone. He muscular, though. He muscular. He's stout. Yeah. He's stout dude. Well, feed, feed your nephew what you're feeding him. Dog food. Well, dog food. Go. That's it, man. Dog you're getting it. that premium dog food. <laughs> Not that $40 bag. You're getting the $70 bag, buddy. Three times a day. Boom, boom, boom. Well, there you go. Cup. That, yeah. that, that'll make him big. Put on some muscle. That'll make him something. I'll make him something. You get him like a set of weights or Maybe something. it'll be good for his hair. It's good for George's hair. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice his nails grow great. Lad. Hey, he got nice hair. He got a haircut the other day. And he's like, hey, Oko. I was like, what's up, buddy? He's like, I got a haircut. What do you think about it? I was like, I think that looks great. And you didn't even said, notice it. That's good. No, I did notice it. You know, but typically when his hair gets long, I call him a hippie. So you need a haircut hippie. And it's not even that long. It's just like a little bit on the sides or yeah. something like that. Yeah, but I, I bust his chops all the time. But he's a good kid, man. He listens really well. He does really well in uh, jiu-jitsu, you know, which a lot of people, he's on the spectrum. So a lot of people don't expect that. The spectrum? The spectrum is like uh, autism. Okay. So he, he's autistic. And, and for, for for his specific uh, thing of autism, which it, it, this is way more, way more frequent than I ever thought. Like these are classes and classes of kids that are straight up autistic. And uh, there's, a, there's a whole spectrum on how the severity of it and Previously, they had his diagnosis, what's called Asperger's, which is a high-functioning uh, uh, set of autism. Just that, he's not very social with other people. Yeah, it's just that his social cues is skewed, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, like, part of his special program is to teach him social cues. And then also having him in, in the jiu-jitsu program, too, uh, it helps him with his social. How, how does he get along with the other kids? He gets along really, really good with them. Uh, in the in the beginning, like, had a, they don't understand, like, distance they don't understand, like, you know, just going up and hug, hugging other kids just randomly, you know, yeah. especially at that age. That You know, he, he doesn't understand that. You hey, just, bro, you how just about, grab somebody. hey, hey, yeah. pound it. <laughs> yeah, he's like, this is not Europe. You don't walk up on somebody and just start, like, kind of like, me schools, me schools, up on their leg, you know what I mean? You can't do that. Wait, so, is that what they do in Europe? I don't know. That was off of uh, Euro Trip. <laughs> <laughs> he's in there. He's I'm in the like, train cart, and he's like, "Miss Cousy," and the light goes off, and he's like over there licking the dude's face. Miss Cousy. <laughs> Note to self: Don't go to Europe. You're gonna get humped, dude. Europe. <laughs> Yo, you know what's funny? I lived in Europe for a bit, and uh, I had friends that come over, and they're like, "Hey, hey are those guys gay?" And I was like, "Nah, they're just German." They're like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> they dress real metro, very feminine, like you know. That's what it is. But it was interesting. Anyway, I digress. But yeah, man, I have actually a couple kids that are on the spectrum and with different different le- levels and severities of it, and they just seem to thrive. And when I talk to their parents, they're like, dude, they're doing so much better at home. They're doing so much better at school. It's just, it's pretty amazing. And to be honest, they're some of my best students. You know what I mean? They have their own like kind of like little quirks and, and ticks. You just have to be able to refocus them. What you do, they're, they're right in line, man. Well, what do you guys do to refocus them when they're... Uh, I use... Things like positive reinforcements, specific positive reinforcements for this. So, you know, 
typically when people are coaches or instructors and so on and so forth, they, they kind of, uh, there's co- different ways to do it. And the common way, you know, maybe the less educated or ones that haven't looked into it is like a negative style reinforcement. It's like, ah, oh, stop, do push ups, or right, good over here. They start yelling at them. Uh, what I do instead is. That's my style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I mean, that works for like 1%, 2% of the population that would come and train. But, you know, when we have other kids, and this works for all kids, is uh, the positive reinforcement portion of this. So like if I have a, if I have a student, let's name her Zoe, and she's standing there perfectly in line, feet together, hands to the side, waiting for instructions, looking at me, being attentive, and I have another one, name them whatever, who's not doing it, I don't go, hey, start standing in line, feet together. I was like, hey, everybody, look at Zoe. See how amazing she's standing there? She's got her feet inside. She's very attentive. Uh, Let's be okay. like Zoe. And then they look and they look at all. Oh, and then they all go into line. You know, it's like okay. some of the refocusing techniques, you know. And realize, depending on your age group, that you only have a certain amount of time of instruction that you can do. So you have to use different kind of like teaching methods, like legit teaching methods. I use the steady method. Um, and it breaks it down pretty easily for them. And they're able to get it and knocks it out in the steps and then, um, to be honest, I even incorporate that into my adult classes when, when it comes to the more, when it comes to the more complicated techniques that we're using. And. Oh, I was gonna say, who's not paying attention? No, it's not that, but okay. when it comes to more complicated techniques, it gets confusing. Cause there's so many steps. By the time you remember the last step, what was the first step again? How many, how often does that happen when you're, when you're in a good training and somebody taught you something, right? I don't know, I'm pretty fucking good, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> So, so you, at the end of what the instructor, any questions? No, no, good, good, good. Everybody, well, I mean, there's some people that get it, already know it. And then everybody else is like, what was the first, how do we even start this? What was the position? You know what I mean? So. I've done that too. Like. I, I've done it too. Like, like, I've done it too. Like you'll go over, over something that we've gone over many, many times. And all of a sudden you get done explaining and I'm like, what the fuck are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, like, like. Wait a minute. I, yeah. What? What are we doing? So. So that's why I think it's, you know. Okay. But yeah, man, so it's, it's been overall just extremely positive experience. My, my nephew's doing really well. He is tiny, but he's, he has gained a little bit of weight and he's also getting a little bit taller too, which is pretty interesting, you know. So it's a good kid. I don't know how we got on that subject. Oh, somehow went from Robbie's diet to his kid <laughs> up to my, you know how we nephew. always go down a rabbit hole. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it is what it is. Georgie, George has been doing good, man. George is killing it. George. My dog. Oh. George killed. He hasn't killed any other animals in a long time now, mostly because squirrels know to avoid the yard. Moles do not dig in our backyard, and the ducks know to stay out. Huh. So the only thing we have to worry about now is lizards. So, but he's killed in the past, right? Oh, yeah. So he's still a murderer. For sure. <laughs> for sure. For sure, for sure, for sure. <laughs> not even going to. It's one of those things, too, and I'm not, I'm not proud of it, man. I'm kind of like, I was like, Bro. Like the first time that I saw him snatch a squirrel's life, oh, I had I, oh I could I could have got it on video. I heard him barking up this tree. Two squirrels were fighting in a tree. Squirrels fight. Apparently they fight. I'm like, dude, this is my tree. It's my nuts. Get out of here. And George at the base of the tree barking. Man, I open up the door and I look outside. And I'm like, George, stop barking. I'm screaming. You know, I'm not screaming. I'm gonna give him a good yell. And then one squirrel knocks the other one off, and I watch it. And that, <laughs> that squirrel <laughs> fell, bounced off the ground. George is like, oh. <laughs> he lunged at the squirrel. Squirrel lunged at him. He backed up. I was like, "Oh hell no!" Snatch, whip, whip, done. Uh, it was cr- it was that. It was sn- soul instant, snatching, yeah. quick. And I was just like, "No, what? Oh my god, you're a murderer!" And uh, you gotta remember, he's a part hunting dog. <laughs> yeah. What do you expect? It is what it is. It's a hunting dog. So I played, try to get the squirrel away from George for like two hours in the backyard. That was fun. And then. uh yeah, my threw it in my neighbor's yard. Oh, that's always good. Well, this is how it happened, right? So I had to trick him. So after like running around for like an hour and a half, I went and got some peanut butter and a cracker, and I grabbed the the pooper claw. You know what I'm talking about? Where you pick up the yeah. poop. And so I'm like, Georgie, he comes over, still has the squirrel in his mouth. Tail's gone though, half the head's gone. So he's been chewing on it. Uh. And and he drops the squirrel, takes the cracker, and I, as soon as he drops it, I claw that squirrel and just shuck it over the over the fence. I'll let the neighbor know though. I was like, "Hey, listen, if you see a dead squirrel in your in your yard, it's that's my fault." What did he say? He was like, "Okay, I'll take care of it." My is, neighbor's pretty cool. Is this the one with the pit bull? No, 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 oh, no, no. Okay. I wouldn't throw it in that. Uh, it was I, I was closer to the to the other side. Oh, okay. Mil- military cat, you know. Okay. And uh, yeah, 
Yeah, no, he was cool about it. I have good, I have good neighbors. The one with the pit bull, uh, we call her Miss Piggy. She's a, she's a, she's like a red nose pit, but kind of like a little bit overweight, you know. So you're fat shaming her? A little bit, a little bit. But she's sweet. She sweet comes out there. She barks to call my dogs out, and then they fight at the fence. So sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? Ruby's like, oh, which is my little pit bull. She's a tiny thing too. She's like barely fifty pounds. She uh, she'll run around and like pretend like she didn't hear me, and she go like pee and come inside. Jackie comes in right away. He's the worst. Which is why the, is he the worst? I thought he was the best one. No, no, no. He's the worst. He'll be all up in that Miss Piggy's face, rah, 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 screechy bark. I'm like, ugh. And he's a rat terrier, so he's tiny. It's like thirteen pounds. I was like that that dog next door will snatch your soul just like a George did that squirrel. Terrible. I don't, anyways, I don't know if you guys even care about. To buy your dogs. I'm just saying. That's amazing, though. You guys are still online with us? What do we got? One, two, three. It doesn't matter. That's crazy. Uh, Is my story's interesting? Give me a thumbs up. No. <laughs> thumbs down if you don't like it. Anyway, uh, what do you want to talk about? I, I was going to ask you something about... Uh, oh, I know. Did you watch the fight last week with uh, Silva and uh, Stylebender? I did not. I saw the highlights. And what did you think? Wow. That looked really cool. That was some cool stuff, man. It was like some like matrixy shit. It's like whoo, miss, boop. You know? I don't know. I didn't think that it was. The I highlight. thought I thought it was a good fight, but the consensus online was that it was an amazing fight. I'm like, it, it really wasn't that amazing. It was a good well, fight for the technical. No, no, striking I, don't ability, get me wrong. It was amazing. It yeah. was a good fight, but I've seen better. fights. What I'm saying is, is like, I guess it's just a matter of opinion. I well, guess. you're thinking like it's not a, this knockout, bloody beating, beatdown. No. What, what it was though, at least from the highlights that I saw, it was some crazy like major C missing, and then then also like the, the the hits that did land. We were like, whoa, that was good. Silver landed some good ones, and and in style bender, uh, uh, what's his name? Adesanya. Adesanya, dude, he was dude, he was putting some crazy cool combinations together. I didn't like the fact that it was only three rounds, you know? Yeah, I know I, that was the biggest thing about, you know, because they lost the championship portion. So it came down to three rounds. But I kind of, to be honest, I um, I know you disagree, but I kind of am with Shale, Shale Sonnen, on this subject when it comes to uh, if it's not a championship round, it shouldn't be five rounds. And the reason is, is just because of the amount of damage your body takes going five rounds. Well, it's, you, you fight different. You fight different going five rounds than you do if you fight three rounds. You know what I mean? Like, you're, you're conserving energy a little bit more. It slows the pace down. Very few fighters go all five rounds at the higher pace. I think I think the three rounds is good. I think three rounds is good. I, I don't really care for – to be honest, I don't want to watch 25 minutes of fighting. I do. I don't. Not, I, not I, with the same fight. I, I'd, I, rather, I'd rather the more fast and furious get it, get it done in the 15 minutes, which is still a hell of a long I think, time. I, I think there's more – more technical aspects in five rounds than three because you, you have it's slow. It's a slower. Yeah. Fight. It's a slower it down. fight. Well, know? if that's the case, I believe that we should do a first round, 10 minute and a second and a second round five for our normal fights. And then for our championship fights, 10, five, five, it, it was still, you know, if you do 10, five, it will still be 15 minutes. I know. But what I'm saying is, is that that will change. That will make it more technical, change up the thing instead of, instead of having 25 minutes of fighting, you keep it at 15 minutes. If you want more of a technical technical round, make it the 10-5. So it's still 15 minutes. We're not destroying these guys. Listen, man, our bodies are not meant to fight for 25 minutes. But they're time. doing it. They're doing it, and they're suffering for it. They're suffering for it. The ones that are going these big big battles, they're suffering for it. Do we want? I want to see an exciting fight just like everybody else, but I don't want to watch 25 minutes of a fight where two guys are trying to conserve just a little bit of energy for the end. You know what I mean? And that, I think that's, and again, I'm going to pull shell up on this. I think that's what happened with boxing. Once they went at 12 rounds, I'm like, fuck, it's a snooze fest, man. Because the first three, four rounds are your feel out rounds, which is just kind of putzing about. And then you got a couple, couple little action rounds in the middle. And then you got the gusto at the very end, if you make it to the very end, which typically most of them do. Because it's hard to knock out somebody who moves their head and their body. So it's, that's kind of interesting. That's the reason I don't. I'm not really big on the 20, 25 minutes. I am. I, I, I mean, I don't want all the fights to be 25 minutes, but I do like that the main event is 25 minutes because normally whoever's headlining 
you know, it's the top tier guys. Yeah. You know, and those top tier guys are buying for a spot to get a title shot. Yeah. So, you know, when, when you, when you cut two rounds out of it, sometimes you don't get all of it. You know, it could be close. Like I saw some people on Juan San Silva one. I'm like, yeah, I don't know about those that. Those right there are your Silva oh, lovers. Love you know what I mean? I don't know about that. I don't know about that, man. I mean, you know I, mean? I did take a couple <laughs> privates, some I, privates. I think, I think that the second round was close, and he could have gone either way. So if Silva got it, fine, he got it. But the first and the third, you know, no, no, there was no doubt that Stylebender got that fight. Yeah, yeah. Um, that that cat right there, this this thing right here. I love cats, by the way. Not as much as dogs, but I like them. Yeah. The only problem I have with cats is I can't breathe around. Them. You can't breathe. Breathe. Why? You got allergies? Apparently, I do. Well, I'm allergic to cats. Isn't it rough? You're like eyes start burning. Not can't really. Breathe. No. I'm used to it by now. Oh, I'm not. I don't like not breathing. I don't have sleep apnea, so I don't. I don't know what it's like. But I, I imagine it's terrible. Makes you tired. I use the machine, so. No, you got the machine. You yeah. clean the machine out. Do you, is there a solution that you use? Because I have a, I have one of my buddies who who just got it, and he thinks he keeps getting sick because it's not getting cleaned out properly. Water and soap. Is that all you use? Just yeah. water and soap. I haven't gotten sick from it. Or okay. Maybe, maybe he's not cleaning it right. Maybe not. Maybe not. What kind? What kind of water? Some just normal, like yeah. I mean, like Don, you use a dial. What do you use? Is, is there any different kind of water that comes out of the faucet? I'm asking about the soap, brother. Oh, you said you said water. No, I said <laughs> what? No, no, you said. I said, was, is he using Don? Is you he using said, dial? Is there, is there a different kind of water you use? <laughs> the, the kind that's wet. That's the kind that I use. So your your friend might want to use the wet water. They don't have the dehydrated water. <laughs> what about not. soft water versus hard water? Uh, if whatever One leaves a little lime whatever, whatever, up in there. Whatever comes. Clogs up your tubes. It. Okay. No. Yeah, that's it. So what kind of soap though? That's what I was asking. Yeah. Dial. Whatever I have, even if he's like shower bar soap, you just no. spray that shit down in there. Just kind of. I don't. I don't use bar soap. I use uh, the the liquid one. Yeah. It's like so, body body wash. It'd be kind of hard to watch, you know, that shit with. With bar soap. Yeah, man. Can you imagine trying to shove that thing in the tube? It get clogged. Tube's like that big. Yeah, the bar, bar soap's soap like is, this big. Yeah, trying to shove it in that tube. It's like uh, <laughs> I only go so far. Yeah, no. no yeah, no, avoid no, that. No. Avoid that like a plague. No. Yeah. So, anywho, um, I know Kane's fighting tomorrow. Uh, he's coming Ganya, back, right? Yeah, he's coming back from a two-year layoff. Who do you think he's got? Who you, who, who you got on that one? Man, it's going to be kind of hard to say because Kane's going to throw a one-two and go for that takedown immediately. Yeah, well, he's saying that he wants to bang it out with him. He's saying that, that he be, wants to bang it out with him. That would be silly. So he's, it's like, bro, just go. He's, with a, he's a live by the sword, die by the sword kind of fellow. Well. No, I think that's why he's got injured so much. But he's he's talking about he wants to smash it out with this heavy hitter who uh, <sighs> who hit, uh, was it, Uberim so hard. He's like, that was the hardest he ever hit. I'm not down. No, I think his best his best bet is to set up his takedowns with the striking, just like he's always done. Don't try to stand and bang with a guy that takes people's heads off. I don't know. When you, remember when he fought, uh, what's his name? Uh, was it Dos Anjos? It was, uh, that was a bang out fight right there. Well, Dos Anjos, yeah. He fought him the, the second and third time that he fought him. He he stood up with him and you know he you know did some damage, but that took some some years away from him too, man. For sure, because yeah, those two were just battles. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Is that like, well, man, if he's saying that he's gonna bang it out with them like that, like this is gonna be that's gonna be a barn burner. Yeah, two years out, man. I don't know with Bro, somebody who can hit like that. I, that sounds like a sketchy that's situation. Thing, man, you you saw so Overeem's head when when he fucking hit him. It looked like a Pez dispenser. Yeah. It popped back. Shit popped out. If it was a pinata, kids would have been eaten for, for weeks. Same thing with the other guys that he knocked out. You know, he was hard shots, man. He's a he's a big dude. Yeah, you definitely need to wrestle that guy. You need yeah, to like, you get need on to... those legs. Look who was Take him down. Just tucker him out. He's a big dude. He's going to be hard, but tucker his ass out and start start putting yeah. putting some pitter pass to the dome. Everybody you know? knows that his cardio is not all that great. Make it some so, anytime you're carrying that amount of, that amount of meat. So when Stipe Got fought him, suit. he put all his weight on him and and you know, wrestle fucked him. 
That's what he's got to do. Oh. And, and, I, and I have no doubt that if he gets on top, he's going to finish in Gano. Speaking of wrestling. Because Tipe didn't finish him. No. But speaking of wrestling, though, so that brings me over to Askren. Ben Askren versus Robbie Lawler. Oh. Ooh, shit. I'm like, but I'm a Robbie fan through and through. I know Askren is like the man, right? But I'm like, Robbie. Well, the thing is that uh, Robbie's got some wrestling, too. I mean, obviously not as high level as Askren. Yeah. But he, he might be able to, you know, avoid the takedown early on. So he does pretty good against wrestlers, though, don't yeah. he? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm kind of like, ugh, there's a chance, Robbie. You know what I mean? But he's like one of my, uh, of the, of the old school. Yeah. You know what I mean? Who went new school. Bro, he's and, doing well. And he's still like 33, 34 That's years old. That's what I'm saying. He's so been doing it for so long. That's what I'm saying. It's so irritating. So he's still like younger than me by like, oh my God, forever. Yeah. But anyways, it's bullshit. <laughs> but, but no, no. I want him to, I want him to win. I want him to win, Robbie. Do I put some money on it? He's gangster. You want Askren to win? I I, I don't want anybody. I want to see a good fight, but I'll take Askren if you uh, if you're gonna take. Robbie. I mean, I think that's a pretty safe bet for you. But I want Robbie to win. Okay, so what you're saying is that you don't want to put your money where your mouth is, bro. I have no <laughs> idea. I have no idea how this goes. I have no idea how this one's gonna go. I I'm not gonna. I can't. I can't put a put a real bet on it. I mean, I know Askren is supposed to be like like a, a Habib. You know what I mean? Style fighter. You know, some people say that maybe he's even better than Habib as far as his wrestling goes, and his ability to take someone down and uh, s- s- wrestle him to death. That would be an interesting fight right there. Habib versus uh, Askren. Askren. Yeah. Yeah, I was talking about that. Uh, I forget who I was talking about, but I think that would be a very interesting fight to see. That would be a very interesting fight I to mean, see. I mean, I know that, that Askren's a lot lighter than him, though, isn't he? No, Askren fights at 170. Okay, well, cool. They can Habib fights at, at 155, but... He has a hard time making 155, typically, don't he? Well, he he did for a while. I don't know how he's doing now. Well, he made it this last time. Yeah. With with Connor. So I think that uh, maybe maybe 155, would, would he, that'd be a good one. I don't, one I don't know if Askren can make it, though. 155? Maybe a catch weight of 165 or... or Have a fight at 170. 170. Fuck it. Yeah. Fuck it. Fight at 170. Do do the damn thing. That would be a great fight. I would like that. But uh, Cowboy Cerrone versus uh, Conor McGregor, though, that... that, that. Is that official or is there still, you know, rumors? You know, I don't know. But what I do know is that would be a fun fight to watch. That's a fun fight to watch. I don't care who you are. Who do you think would win that? Oh, shit, bro. Who knows? Who knows? At what weight, though? 170. 170 or 155? 170. Because Cowboy has a hard time making 155. He made 155 last time. So I say 170. But, man. Well, he made it, and he looked outstanding. Yeah, but he... Dude, he put... What's his name on Queer Street? He was a... Bop, 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 talking all that shit. Alexander Hernandez. Yeah, yeah, Hernandez. But that's the thing, man. He 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 was talking about how miserable the cut to 155 yeah, is. Yeah, man. Have him fight at 170. Yeah. He likes fighting at 170, don't he? He doesn't because the guys are, tend to be a little bit bigger than him. Yeah, but it's Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor fights at 155, 170. It's Conor McGregor. McGregor. I try to use the proper reflections when, when, I, proper when I say 12. their names. Proper 12. Yeah, proper 12. We're like a proper tree. <laughs> Three years has been in the barrel. Uh, no. I, don't, I don't know if they'll do 170, though. Uh, I think Conor would want to get that advantage at 155 because he'll make 155. Easier than Cowboy. Cowboy will tell you flat out he's miserable. Yeah. When he's, but he's like, bro, you were at 170. I get that you you had a couple of losses and shit. If you're that miserable making 155, stick to 170. Stick to 170, man. But he he's, he's, he said he's refocused and he wants to chase that belt. At 155. At 155, but that, that road goes through Habib. Yeah. You know? And, yeah. and if you don't get through Connor, you're not going to get Habib. Yeah. That's going to be an awesome fight, though. Although Dana came out and said that Tony is the number one contender. So Tony gets the fight. So Tony should be next in line to... Uh, Once to Habib get, gets cleared to come back and fight. Well, Habib can come back anytime he wants because uh, all he has to do is do that anti-bullying uh, thing for uh, Nevada. But he's like, fuck you. I ain't doing shit for you. Matter of fact, I'm not even going to fight in your state. So, Well, they need to put it in a different state then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, go to California. He uh, he said that uh, he's not going to come back until uh, his teammates can come uh, back. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. You know, come back. So he's a big enough name now. But he's able to kind of make a little. The bit problem like is that. that that's going to be sometime in October. It so is what it is. Bruce. What, what do you do? 
you know. Watch Robbie Lawler and Askren and watch. Yeah, but uh, but you're gonna hold up King the Velasquez hold and, up the belt for that long. Of course, of course, because they're you know. Well, as far as a fan goes, we're like, I want it, I want it now. But as far as a fighter man, you Bro, gotta realize it's like we are in February right now. You're talking about February. I know. February. I know. Ten months. I know. Man. Eight months. Eight months. Yeah. Eight, eight months. months from now. Yeah, I know. I think Dana does a, a fucking interim belt. You'd be like, yo, I'm going to strip your ass if you don't fight. That's what they need to start doing. You know, instead of making this interim fights, it's like, yo, just flat out strip them. I think, I think what they should do is... Um, well, depend, you're, depending, you're, depending on the circumstances. Yeah, yeah. I think it, they should do it, unless there's an injury. Yeah. I think a uh, champion should defend themselves every six months. Yeah. Gives them two fights a year. It gives them some good off time. It gets them... Yeah. Good time to train for that fight. For sure. And you know who your opponent is. You know a lot I mean? of guys were, you know, wanting to fight like three, four times a year, but you don't give your body enough time to recover. Well, I mean, if they can do three, four times a year, cool, man. You can, but a minimum is yeah. what I'm saying. Like, there should be a minimum. So, like, you're a champion, you should minimum, you know, every six months. I mean, it's what the people want. And they'll wait six months, and it will build, it will build, and it will give it time to put cars together for all the weight classes that we have. You see who joined? Who's that? That faggot. She, fuck that guy, man. This guy, hey, we're well, see when push the time. You know exactly what time we're starting, man. You know exactly what time we're starting. Uh, why are you giving my boy a hard time? Because I'm you're giving him a hard time this whole damn time. He's supposed to come train with me this morning. Oh, I'm at breakfast. You know what time open mat is. Fucking, he got tapped Robbie, out. Robbie, he, he's so salty right now. It's not even funny. So salty. I called him too. He didn't answer. Fucker. Just saying. Well, what if he was in the middle of something? Maybe he was taking a poop. Dude, he was talking with you online. No, he was not. He didn't answer my call when I called Exactly. Me. He didn't answer you either. All right. Well, so he wasn't talking to me. It's because you're not important enough. Oh. It's okay. I'm not offended by it. <laughs> and if I was offended, it's okay to be offended. It's okay to be offended. <laughs> you can always be offended. Yeah, it's, it's okay. It doesn't mean shit has to happen. It's your right. It's your, it's your right, right to, to be, be offended, offended, guys. Offended, yeah? It's like your right, right to have some But anyway, hey, let's go back to the fights. What were we talking about? Connor and... Uh... Connor and Cowboy. No, but uh, Ferguson. Ferguson and, and uh, Habib. Habib. That, man, that'd be nice, like right around April. Well, I like Ferguson just because he's so active. I think he'll be make a great scramble. Um, well, that's the thing, you know, like he fights really good off his back. Yeah. Not a lot of guys can do that. No, no. He's a snap, snap jutsu guy, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like he likes that snap down. I watched a couple of his little tutorials on how he, he sets up his darts for snap. And, and he's, he's not a bad wrestler either. No. No, he's not. He's super athletic. Yeah. Man. Super athletic. It's funny how people say he's weird and shit. I'm like, I don't care if he's weird, local, crazy, whatever. I met him. He let me hold his belt. He was cool as fuck to me, man. Well, I like he didn't him. let you hold his balls. He's fine. I said belt. <laughs> belt. Calm down. The shit's heavy, by the way. Well, it's 25 pounds. So. Yeah. I didn't expect it. He's like, hey, you want to hold the belt? I was like, okay. What, what what do you think of the new belt? Um, I know a lot of people don't like it, but to be honest, I just don't care enough it's, to be like, oh, it's ugly. It looks like a dinner plate. It's cheesy as fuck. Nah, they just try to go with cleaner lines is all they try to do. I think they should make it classic. I think they should do classic Florida Leaf style, style fucking etchings and shit like that. You will see, make it look well, like that's what classic they have. That's what I said. I think they should make keep it classic. You just keep your old one. That was... But, that was such a good looking belt. Man, you know, anytime you change anything, though, people are going to complain. When they change the Jaguars logo for over here in Jacksonville. Oh, that was, that was gay as fuck. Yeah, but, I mean, and I don't mean gonna... homosexual. I mean gay. I mean <laughs> shitty. As in not gay. Okay. Yeah. But it, you just got to realize, anytime you change anything, people are always going to be like, oh, I don't like it. Don't know. It's, it's cool. You don't have to like everything. And then give it a month or two. And people are like, that's just what it is. So when they change it again, they're like, oh, I don't like it. I like the old one better. Eh. Just like the WWE. Yeah. They have such a cool, cool looking belts and now their belts are like, eh, eh. Come at me, bro. Ugh. I know you don't like wrestling. Well, I mean, I mean it's cool. You should get a belt for it's good acting, man. It's physical acting is what that is. Bro, those those, those guys are athletes. Right, I didn't say it. Some, they weren't. Some of that shit that physical they physical actors. Some of that shit that they do, man. I can't jump off the rope and slam no, fuck no. slam dude up in this. No, I can't you, do that. You imagine jumping off of the third rope and and fucking landing and breaking your foot or head, neck. Oh. That's happened. Yeah, they break in their necks. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. These they, guys, these they guys, do, they do some stuff for theatrics, man. They'll cut themselves. Yeah, they, they, these guys get some of the worst injuries, and and they still have to work injured. 
because if you're not on, you know, if you're not working, you're not making money. Yeah. You know, and these guys often tour, you know, like 300 days out of the year. A lot of times. That, that's just an insane schedule. A lot of times. That's not a life I would want, man. No. But... But, you know, you get the frame and fortune and all kind of stuff now. Well, not all of them do. I'm saying now, mm-hmm. if you're that percentage. But it's just like the UFC, man. A lot of these guys are not getting that kind of money that people think they'd be getting. Yeah. And at the time, you're paying your coaches and your trainers and your... Your camp. Oh, cost, your camp cost, and, costs a lot of money. Look at cool bucks, bro. Gastelum said that he spent 50 grand on his last camp. I'm yeah. like, holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's somebody's year salary. And then on top of that, like, you got to think of recovery money, all that shit. Just in recovery alone. You know, that's that that's thirty, forty grand shit. If you want if you want to be a top tier <clears> dude, you know. But yeah. Like the people so if you make it a hundred thousand dollars, great. You get what thirty of it after everything's all said and done, taxes and shit. Man, that's why these guys need to be making millions for for that kind of sport. I'd rather I don't know, man. Listen, I, the, the, I, I, I can get into it where I think, you know, pro athletes are overpaid, blah blah blah, so on and so forth compared to like what other people are, but I do also understand that they're bringing in a certain amount of money and they should be able to get paid for what they do to bring in he, that amount of here's money. Here's the, the thing, league. you know, teachers, firefighters, police officers, they're paid by the government, the city. These are private entities. Yeah, so it's going to be That are paying these guys. I know. It. It's, the, it's not like the, the money that they pay these UFC fighters or wrestlers, they're not coming out of our tax dollars. No, no. And granted, listen, I, I do believe that teachers, firefighters, and, you know, any first responder and, and law, law enforcement agents, they need to be making a decent wage. Yeah. You know, better than, than what they make now. Yeah. Because it's just not nearly enough. Matter of fact, getting rid of taxes for them, you know, having to pay taxes would help. That would be. Because- so, you know, I saw something on it and I'm like, man, absolutely. Oh, so going to taxes and all that kind of stuff. Because taxation is theft. The taxation is straight up gangster theft, bro. Ain't that right, That's Jay? why it should be fair, ta- fair tax, man. Fair tax. Did you see Yang uh, is going to be running for president? He was on Joe Rogan. Andrew Yang? Yeah. I saw that. I saw his platform, too. I kind of dig it. Uh, what is he running on? He's running. He's mainly running on universal income. Uh, income. It How works much? like $1,000 a month. So basically for rent and it just it's survival. just to help help for basic survival. Where is that money coming from though? So that's kind of like the the social programming that's gonna be through what, what our income taxes and shit is, right? Or the, the tax taxation, I guess. I guess that's how he's coming in through it. I can't really remember exactly, but that's his basic thing. And to be honest, uh, the big thing about the reason why he's saying that is is because the majority of jobs training is getting automated. And the majority of jobs are going away. All our truckers are going to be going away once the truck trucking industry gets automated. Fucking Tesla's going to put them out of business. Yep, all of our all our sales jobs is going to get automated. E-commerce killing the malls, killing all the normal uh, normal uh, brick and mortar businesses. Yeah. Uh, and all in all, they're talking about over eighty percent of the jobs that are in the U.S. is going to be automated. So that leaves 20%. And then the big argument is like, well, they need to get tech jobs. Well, how are you going to get a guy who's 50 years old to get a tech job? Or 60 years old. Or 60 years old. You know what I mean? I.e. coding, which is only a, a 20% growth. Yeah. Because we can't have 100% of people coding or else it's, it's, you're not making any money then, right? Yeah. So this $1,000 a month basically is to help kind of float them while they start their own entrepreneurial stuff and like maybe start cra- craftsman type work again where people are paying for – you know, woodwork, woodwork, handmade, metal work. handmade shit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Trade, trade style jobs. You know, I what gotta mean? listen to it. I'm like five or six episodes behind on Rogan right now. It's because re- I listen to so many podcasts. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, to be honest, man, I really like this guy. He seemed very, very intelligent. He's an immigrant, or his parents were an immigrant. He was born in the U.S. Uh, yeah. Where are his parents from? China? Uh, Taiwan or some shit like okay. that. Yeah, I think Taiwan or some shit. But yeah, so he, he was a, he's not like, and he's running under the, as a Democrat, um, which he's like, hey, listen, the only way that I would be able to have a chance to, to make it as president is if I pick the party. And basically, he's like, he he is more in line with a Democrat because with the uh, Democratic people or group party 
because DNC because of the platform that he's running on with mm-hmm. the social social. Uh, God, what the fuck? I just said it. Look who it is. Look at that, Sherry. What the fuck? I know. Anyways, she was supposed to be in some some sort of baby shower, but anyway, right, I digress. Right, right. He, she's Keep probably going. there on the phone watching. That's cool. All right, hey, no, we're glad you're here. Oh wait, no, that glad you're listening. Over here. No, no, we're glad you're listening. <laughs> All right, so check it out. Anyways. What was I saying? Uh, Andrew Young. He's running on, under the Democratic banner. Yeah, Democratic banner just because of the, the, uh, the $1,000 a month for the family. What do they call the it? The universal income. Universal income situation. And then also, like, just trying to create, you know, jobs. You know what I mean? Uh, and he's like, these this automation system is coming. And more likely, it's going to be in full swing within 11 years or so. So it's like here. Think about it. Decade. Fuck. It's here. I'll be in my 50s. But, but what, what And out of a job. What he's saying is... It's not going to be like, oh, 11 years and boom, it's happening. But it's yeah. going to gradually happen yeah. and make it worse. And the economy is going to go, burr. Oh, another thing, too, he, uh, he's, he's big on, which I thought was really cool, is uh, uh, federal decriminalization of marijuana. Okay. And uh, mass parting of uh, small, petty drug crimes concerning marijuana. Which means all these people that are in jail for yeah. mass amount of time for, for marijuana, for weed, for yeah. weed is going to get parted. Cool. Yeah, that's good. I mean, you should save the that for rapists let, and murderers and that that kind of yeah. stuff. You should save save jail for egregious crimes, not for this dude had a fucking ounce. What, what if you were transporting bales and bales of marijuana? I mean, I mean, <laughs> well, it was for medical purposes. That's something a little different. But I mean, you got something, you got a couple ounces on, yeah. whatever, man, or even, for personal use. Come on, man. Yeah. Come on, you got to join. Grew some plants. Well, what the yeah. fuck, man. And then, uh, and how is he going to do that? It has to be gradually. Well, he no, 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 no. He said he wants to, when he becomes president, he becomes president, he's going to do a mass pardon of all those. And he says he wants to high five them all as they come out of jail. And Joe's Dude. like, you're going to be very, very busy, my friend. He's like, yep, but it'll be the coolest freaking thing ever. He's like, they don't need to be in jail for marijuana. Yeah. And I agree. I, I agree, agree 100%. Why, why would you put someone in jail for something that they're doing that's not hurting? That's terrible idea and i'm not saying hey go out smoke marijuana or do drugs that's not what i'm saying yeah. what i'm saying is if, if a person's choice to do whatever they want with their body i.e have a drink yeah. i.e smoke a joint i.e work out or don't work out that's up to them yeah you know what i mean so them being put in well, prison let me let me ask you this crap. Did, 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 he, did he mention anything about expunging their records because it's cool you're gonna let him out but they're still gonna no, have man. a record he didn't, he didn't go in there and i'm gonna expunge the record no he yeah. said he's like they're getting mass pardon. So I imagine part of the mass pardon is that that doesn't go anywhere. It's a pardon. You know what I mean? Or if it was, it's you like, hey, I was in jail because I, let's say I sold an ounce of marijuana and I got caught. And I went, okay, cool. Whatever. Now, if you sold like heroin, you know, to kiddos or some, some crazy thing like that, that's something, that's something a little bit different. Uh, Sherry said, fuck you too. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, girl? <laughs> uh, so. So yeah, man, I don't know. I kind of really like that guy. And it's definitely a big, big change from, from Trump. But the reason why he said why Trump got elected was, was not because Trump was so much better. It's just that Hillary fucked it up. The DNC tried to skew it, all, kill all the other Democrats to get her in there. And that's something that they kind of like had to atone to. Like, yeah, we did that. We're not going to get in and do that again. You know, we're going to let things naturally flow how they're supposed to flow. And so, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, there was Russian collusion. Oh, 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 of course. Russian collusion. Man, I'm t- I tell you what, man. China, Russia, they've been in our elections every single election. We have been in their elections every single election. We, we've, you know what I mean? We've, we do the same shit. It's back and forth. It's what big countries do. And it's because we're looking out for our best interest. If we can put certain people in certain positions, we know that they will do certain things or not do certain things that are in our best interest. And anybody who wants to think that this they're is some all sort hookers. of... They're all hookers. And they want to say, anybody who wants to say that we are we are supposed to be this high and mighty uh, We're sitting not. on top of it, you know, and we should do everything 100%. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you're not looking at the real world. And you probably only lived in your town for a little bit. Now, if you've ever traveled to these third world countries, I have, by the way, um... You will see what real life is like out in the majority of the world. It's not like how we live here. Even when we struggle here, I'm t- I'm telling you, they do not have the safety nets that we do. They don't. They don't. If you are struggling here, there are social programs to help. There are certain things to help. If you're struggling in, in let's say, India, let's say you're struggling about whatever, they, they don't have those nets. They don't have those nets. Dying in the street, starving to death. They're on shit. Well, 
there are people that are dying here too. There are, there yeah. are, but there there are programs to help people. They, whether they go get them, whatever they have their own their own issues, and they, like I saw this guy, uh, I forget where I was at, maybe it was Tampa or something like that. And I saw this guy on on the road, and he looked like he was dead, bro. And I check him, I'm trying to find out when I talk to local. Hey, you guys see that dude? He looks like he's dead. And they're like, No, he's pissed. He's in the ER. He gets tuned up with bags of IV. Tries to touch the nurse and needs to kick him out. It's just a repeat thing. You know what I mean? So some people, like, there's a mental illness yeah. for sure. We definitely got shit that we got to work on. But I'm saying in comparison to these third world countries, it's a different story. Man. It's a different story. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? We are, the, I believe, one of the greatest countries, probably if not the greatest country, for sure, you know, when it comes to our, when it comes to our people and our freedoms. Even Canada can't even say that their freedom of speech is like that. No, are you kidding? Comedians are getting sued. Yeah, that's hundreds crazy. Of thousands of dollars because they made it. They made a joke and it offended somebody. It offended somebody. Get hundreds the of fuck, fuck out, out of here. here! Why even go to that show? Yeah. Then? Why? Well, what's the incentive for that comedian to keep, you know, doing comedy? Yeah, you keep doing some boring shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go, go. Tap your maple syrup and and just have a great time at the old hockey tournament. I just talked some shit to Canada. <laughs> They're like, fuck you, America. It's, it's okay. What are they going to do? Come down and invade us? Uh, I just watched Super Troopers 2, or at least the beginning. Of it. I had to shut it off. What? Did you, you didn't was, like it? it? Was, I was getting sleepy. Oh. And I was kind of like, this is not like Super Troopers 1. The nostalgia wasn't there. Bro. Like, I thought it was good. I loved it, though. Yeah, but I it's not it was, the same. I thought it was hilarious. Barbara was just over the top. Way over the top did, this time. Did you notice that they fucking look the same? Like they, they didn't age. They do all all look the same. A little bit, a little bit fuller in the face, but they all do look the same. I was for like, sure. "Fuck, I gotta yeah. take some of that shit." They gotta take some of that shit. What shit is that? The <laughs> well, marriage of one. <laughs> well, not 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 the kind that uh, makes your titties, uh, you know, uh, milk milk out. <laughs> you know, you milk out. It's <laughs> what, 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 what is it? Uh, flo- Flow, flake, ah, oh, something with the flow, whatever. High flow? No, no. I forgot what the name of the drug in the movie was, but it was hilarious. Oh, I didn't see it. Oh, anyway, spoiler alert. But yeah, there is that shit. What? Oh, we got going here. Oh, Robbie, you back. What's up? What's up, Bert? Bert. Alberto. What? what are you talking about? Oh, my man, Alberto. He can't even hear us. I know, but he's watching us. Hi, Alberto. <laughs> I'm thirsty? No, that means you're a bitch. <laughs> Remember, sexy bitch. Bullshit. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's told him I take you down hard, <laughs> hard and quick. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I haven't training to sell. So. I know. That, 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 that wouldn't take your you motivation much. dropped, dude. You all right? Yeah, bro, my, my fallopian tubes are. Is your, uh, your testosterone level? Do we have to yeah. shoot you up? What's going on here? I'm just tired and just tired, sleepy. Yeah, you know, I get home and I'm, I get comfortable and it's like, fuck this. She lays on yeah. me and then he lays on me and I'm like, <sighs> I'm not going anywhere. Where are you going? Nowhere. Nowhere. I, know, I, I told you that this, this week too. I was like, man, if I go and I take a nap and then my dogs, my dogs, my dogs lay on me, my dogs lay on me, dude, it's a wrap. Where am I? I can't, it's hard to get up. Especially if they're like snuggled in just right, George is sleeping just right. Bro, he's rough to sleep with sometimes. He'll kick shit. you and shit. Shit, I'm sleepy now and I didn't even train. I went to the yeah. yard to get some footage of uh, Blake and, uh, and Squirrel. Yeah. And I'm like, I was stretching and all. Because that's what I normally do when I get to the yard. I stretch because I'm about to get ready to flood, you know, roll or whatever. I'm like, why the fuck am I stretching? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not doing anything. You're just in your, you're just in your normal zone. Your yeah, habits. I guess. Your habits. Gotta get in the habits. I, I need to start lifting weights. That's what I need to do. Get that testosterone going. Yeah. Well, you, know, you gotta just keep the gym coming to the gym early. You jump on that Bulgarian bag and just start doing squats. Squash. The only the only testosterone that I have left is in my balls. <laughs> I have no issues there. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> That's where it counts anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, what yeah. is that mahogany? <laughs> <laughs> I believe it's cedar. I think it's cedar. <laughs> as long as it's not balsa, because that's yeah. that weak shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that compressed shit. No, not for sure. Oh man! Oh man! Oh man! Oh man! But anyway, I uh, just wanted to do this podcast because we didn't do one last week. Yeah, I, uh, I definitely want to make sure we got Chris, something out too. Chris was gone, so 
Yeah, and last week we got tied up, man. I, I was stuck. I was, oh, no, but dude, I was stuck in a, a secret room. Listen, these motherfuckers made me take my cell phone, set it outside, yeah, lock me in this room, and then teach me a bunch of shit that has nothing to do with me. <laughs> awesome. For hours. So they taught you like science and religion. Bro, no, I can't even talk to you about it. <laughs> I was like, what? I'm not even doing this. I got 11 more months. Why? But it is what it is, man. It is what it is. Anyway. I got out, and I was stressing the whole time because there is a clock in there. I saw a 4 o'clock pop through. I was like, oh, man, I'm supposed to be. And I saw 4.30. I was like, fuck, when is this guy going to shut the fuck up? And then 4.35. I was like, Jesus Christ. And 4, 4.40. And they're like, all right, sign to muster. You go outside the room, stand. You can talk to another in five minutes. And it clears. I hit you guys up. And it's like a bunch of passive aggressive, bitchy comments. Why don't you just give me a call? Let me know. I'm like, I can't give you a call. I've been freaking out for an hour already. Well, so it was already, it was, I was, I was at the height, no, I was me. at the height of my stress level and I have eight and six fucking hours. So no eating for six hours. So I don't know if you know me or not, but I have issues if I don't eat longer than three. And then like, and then the, the guy stressed me out that last little bit. And then I'm like, I have no phone and, and just did get, yeah, I couldn't call you guys. Just, ugh, it was so Listen, bad. It was so, so there was, bad. There was no passive aggressive shit coming from Chris. We both were like, where the fuck is he? Cause normally you do have your phone. Yeah. We didn't know that you didn't have your phone and that they made you put it in a bag and, and make it lock it up and shit. We're like, what the fuck? He could at least give us a call. Yeah. This he is could at least give us a inconsiderate Fuck. Pretty much. Yeah. 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 Didn't even have the, didn't even have the they, common they courtesy was, to call me. That's right. Not even text that's, or message. That's right. But there was nothing passive aggressive about it. I don't know. It. You're like, all right, fuck out. You can at least da, 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 da. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. And I'm driving too. And, I, and I'm like, and I'm like, oh. And then I'm like, on the way, I was halfway there and you're like, oh, let's just scrap it. And I was like, all right, fuck you guys. Chris has some shit to do. By the time we got done, he probably would have cut into it. And I'm like, I'm not yeah. about to have him. So, that makes there was nothing passive aggressive about the comments. Well, that's what's It hard. was just that you were fucking hungry. This is another reason why texting and messaging is shit. Because you can't get tone and flex. You can't get inflection. You can't tell the tone. Well, don't. And that's what I was like. This is a lot of times when me and you were texting. I'm like, bro, you got to call me. I can't. I can't do this. I can't do it. Stop being a fucking millennial. No, bro. it is what it is. Anyway. That's how I always look time is 420. So, 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 <laughs> you say that, you say to, to Mr. Chris, producer, that you're sorry for calling him passive aggressive. Cause what? he, he wasn't being passive aggressive. Was he upset? I don't know. Was he? I don't know. If you're upset, Chris, I'm sorry. I don't know. Look into the camera. If you're upset, Chris, I'm sorry, but I, but I said to you guys already that I'm sorry and I was hungry and I had what well, my issue was. Well, see, it's because you got hungry. So that's, that's how you took it. Listen, man, but you guys also like, like to fuck with people. <laughs> you like to fuck with people and you know that I want to do well with it anyways and you still fuck with me anyways. <laughs> yeah, that is true. You guys know. So, so this is the reaction you guys get because I default to what you guys normally do. Fuck with me or fuck with somebody else or whatever you do. So I will react in that, in that manner. That makes sense. Stop being a lady. Let's go eat. Yeah, let's go eat. What do you want to go eat? I don't know. Well, somewhere. Before we go, is uh, anybody any shout outs that you want to give out? Oh yeah. Let's uh, let's give a good shout out to uh, Blake Dodd. He's got a fight coming up here. He's a uh, pretty boy. What is this? What? Why don't you do it right though? You sound like a dork with a voice. Pretty pretty boy Dodd. He's gonna go out there and bang a rang out there, and then we got Squirrel. Squirrel's gonna go out there. And he's gonna make a choke or two happen. He he might he might Squirrel, punch. You. Squirrel's got tournaments and fights. Like he got tournaments, fights. He probably give a, a a couple one twos, maybe a level change. Come back up in the uppercut. Before you know, he's on your back, just squirreling away, doing what a squirrel does, ch 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 choking a mofo. That's right. So yeah, shout out to you guys. You know, uh, super proud of you. You guys keep up your hard work. Uh, shout out to all my students. You guys kick ass too. Um, a lot of hard work day in and day out. You know, I ask a lot of you guys, you know, with the amount of drilling and stuff you do, but I tell you what, uh, when other people come in and they roll with you, I hear nothing but amazing things about your guys' roles and how your training has come along and how knowledgeable you are in such a short amount of time. So super, super proud of you guys. Um, Lean Impact Nutrition. I always want to give a shout out to my, my buddy, Zach. I'm super proud of him for uh, his business. It's growing. It's doing really, really well. He puts out a great product. So if you have issues with your diet or anything like that, make sure that you give him a little uh, a call. LeanImpactNutrition.com. Uh, Black Hive Tattoo. 
uh, dot com. My boy Nick Wagner runs that shop. And I'll tell you what, it is, I has to say, I has to say, the number one shop in all of Jacksonville. So if you want primo stuff, go to blackhighttattoo.com. Jump on their newsletters. That's how you get in. Each one of their artists, which are all bombdiggity.com, you, uh, they have different ways to get in with them. So some are on a wait list. It is what it is. But if you want premium quality pieces, you want really real thought put behind it when you're putting something on your body forever, uh, I definitely highly recommend those guys. And that's pretty much about it for me. Uh, Matador Roja, we miss you over here. Robbie Nunes, I'm so sorry that you couldn't make it. Uh, maybe your bitch ass will make some time next time. And then uh, Chris, producer Chris, of course, we always miss you. And have fun on your uh, birthday. birthday. Hiatus! It's your birthday. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. Uh, I want to send a shout out also to, you know, Blake Dodd and uh, Chris Squirrel Cropper. We're going to have them on the podcast at some point here before their fights and shit. And uh, also a shout out for some other sponsors that came, you know, last minute. Uh, Renaissance 413 Boxing. Uh, that's Jay Mateo and uh, Alex Ayala uh, for uh, their sponsoring Blake as well as uh, they got a, I think like a gear company. It's called, uh, I want to say Round for Round. Yeah, nice. So, shout out to those guys who uh, stepped up in sponsoring uh, Blake. And, of course, uh, ourselves. We are sponsoring Blake as well as Squirrel. And Art of War Jiu-Jitsu is also a sponsor. So, uh, guys, uh, thank you very much for listening. We'll be back next week in uh, in our regular studio. with Hopefully with everybody, Chris. and uh, Hopefully. Hopefully. Well, he'll, he'll be Hopefully there. Hopefully, actually, you know what? Chris will be there. We are, no, no, listen, listen, we also have Burr Smallwood who's who's going to have a fight on the, um, not this you, weekend. You he, no, wow. no, no, hold on, hold on. He has a fight, um, all right, next weekend, 23rd, 23rd, Wayne's 22nd at 6 sharp, so we'll be down there in St. Pete uh, on the 22nd, Friday. Uh, he'll be fighting the 23rd, so I'll be doing a distance calling to get this going. Ah, and okay. then, uh, yeah, so uh, Muay Thai fight. So, okay. good luck to my boy, Bert. So, next week, it'll be myself and Chris and maybe Sherry if she shows up. I know Chris is up in uh, Bethlehem next week at the Finishers uh, Sub-Only Tournament. And I believe uh, the following week, he's in Iowa at the, what is it, the Spectrum uh, Tournament. Yeah. So, Chris's uh, Squirrel Crawford is going to be pretty busy the next couple of weeks. Yep. And then March 16, Blake's got his fight at combat night. So, God, so much going on. Lots, lots and lots of stuff, man, over these next couple of months for sure. So, I guess uh, it, it might be just me and Chris next week because I don't know if Sherry's going to be, you know, making an appearance. She's a part-timer anyway. Yeah, apparently she's, so. She's not a full-time podcast. She, like she, she ain't about the life. Maybe if she's not coming, then I could possibly get a, a co-host. I'm thinking Maybe about Angel. No. Well, I, can, I could call him, but I'm thinking of somebody else that I could be like, yo, want to be co-host? But I'll save that for later. Nice. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for your support. We appreciate you listening and downloading our shenanigans. And uh, we'll catch you next week. Cheers. Peace. Mm-hmm.